Hello, this is Stu with Productive Computing, giving you video three in the series FileMaker Finding Fundamentals. So if you haven't seen part one or part two, you may want to check those out. And this one will go over some of the more advanced operators. So tune in. Thanks for watching. Continuing on in our sample app, we're going to go over some of the advanced operators. And we'll just jump right in with the first one is the at symbol, which is a single character or digit. So let's look at our list here. And we're just going to do it right in this field here. And if we just have the at symbol, then we get just the single character. When we put in the at symbol in the middle of some characters, then notice what we get here. We'll sort these and we got a digit here as well and we have A and there's H. We go to the end then we don't have any other words evidently but it's, it doesn't bring the other characters either. It looks like it's matching this whole word here so that at symbol can be very helpful. So now let's look at the other one that is just like it, except it is only looking for a digit instead of a character or a digit, and that is the number sign. So if we go back to our list and we put in just the number sign, we don't have any names that have that. So we may have to go to our address field and look at our address. We'll put in the pound sign and there are 482 that have just one digit. As we scroll through these, you can see every address has only one digit. So all the other ones either have no digits or they might have multiple digits. So if you do two numbers in there, two number signs, and we do that find, now we're only going to find the ones that have two digits as we scroll through. So that can be very helpful, especially in something like the phone field, where maybe you want to look for a specific pattern that occurs and we don't have any for that. It looks like there's a space there. So maybe we should try the pound sign space and pound sign and maybe a star. And there we get quite a few of those. So you can interchange some of these operators once you have found their use. We can combine them to have multiple criteria for advanced searching. Next is the double forward slash, which is to find today's date, especially when you're in a date field. So if we look at birthday and we look for today, chances are you won't have entered someone's as a customer that was born today. So we might have to go to a different table, which I've set up that has dates ranging from quite a vast range, going back to 2000. But if we put in the double forward slash, there is one record that has today's date in it. But it did make me wonder, what if we searched for that in the first name field. We don't have any that match the criteria. However, if we actually search for the date, which you can use command and the minus sign to actually insert today's date, and then we do a search, there is a record that has today's date in here, but in a text field, it does not find this date like it would in a date field, which I thought that was interesting. And I also have that here. So it doesn't show up there. But if we do a find and we put in today's date, there is a record with it there. So just something to be mindful of, but that's a very good useful operator. Next is either the double period or the triple period. And these do exactly the same thing, which is to find a range. And typically we think of this in 
dates so we're going to search for a range and we'll just try this and we'll see how many we have there's 32 so as we scroll through these we can see it goes in the exact range now if we do the command r or control r notice it has three dots we only put two in so sometimes filemaker will change what we have in here when it actually does the search so there's two i'm going to hit enter and when we do command r it actually has three so that is very interesting especially when we get to the next one but we could also do a range when it comes to time so if we do seven to eight in our time field then we can continue and see that it has everything with a seven and an eight but it does not get to nine but can we use double ranges and look at how it modified our search automatically just from what we had we had seven dot dot eight and it converted all of that and put in the asterisk. So this is fascinating to see how FileMaker converts your search and may be helpful to troubleshoot how things may or may not be working as you expect. So we'll cancel that and we'll go actually here to do a search in our text field because you can also do the range in the text field. So if we do R to T and we'll sort this here and we'll go up to the front, there's an S there, there's an R, and it goes all the way to anything right up to the T evidently. So there's some interesting ranges that you can do even in a text field. So we have that note here that you can use. Then when we put the curly brackets around those, it can get even more specific and advanced with time and with dates. So if we take this one and put it in our date range, then what might we find? It's finding all of the dates from the 5th to the 10th in January, February, and March every year that we had specified we could have put a range for that as well so very fascinating how you can get very specific when you're using the curly brackets on your range and the same thing with time that you can put in if you're looking for just a specific time now we get to a little bit different kind of searches which are looking for duplicate values of different records of the same field. So we're not looking for duplicate records per se, it's duplicate values uh, of the same field. So we're going to go into find mode. We're gonna put our exclamation point in the first name and hit enter and there's 9,389, which is again, a good reason not to use form view. We want to use list view so we can see these duplicate values now it's unsorted so it doesn't look like they're duplicate but if we sort them now we can see there's all kinds of duplicates but what if we do this with a constrained found set so we're going to put the exclamation point in the last name and we're going to constrain that and now we have several duplicates here but not necessarily of the first name if we sort by first name, notice they don't necessarily have the same last name. So instead of doing a duplicate here and then a constrained duplicate here, it may be better to do a find in the full name category looking for duplicates. And then when we sort by the first name, now you can see each of these have the pairs or more of the duplicate names. So if you have a combination of unique values in a calculated field or an auto enter field, it can be a very simple way of finding duplicates in your search, which you could also do in um, any field if you wanted to. If you wanted to see how many people have the same birthday, you could search that and there's 3,000 people that have duplicate birthdays not necessarily that same one 
So very fascinating things we can do there, a duplicate email address or phone number, all of those can be good. You can even add characters to the duplicate search. So if you're looking for a specific duplication, say of stew, so we'll put in the find and we'll do the exclamation and stew. And there we have several that are found that are duplicates with that particular phrase in there. So you can get even more specific here and that's of different records of the same field. So it's not gonna find stew stew in the same field. If we had that here, it's comparing each record against the other records. Next is the question mark and this is looking for invalid characters. This has to do with having the wrong type of information in a specific type of field. So in a text field, it may not give you much information because you can put almost anything in a text field. But what about in a number field here where this number field, there's zero with a return character and a one. So if we do a find and we look for question marks here, there's one here, and that's because this is text, whereas this field found is supposed to be a number field. So while FileMaker allows text in there, it's not technically a valid character unless uh, you add specific validation rules on the field level that you want to make it a strict data type then this could be one way that you can find invalid characters. And then lastly is the backslash, which is going to escape the next character like tabs or returns. So if you wanna find tabs or returns in a specific field, then you can use this backslash. So if we go into our area here, we'll do a backslash and if you use the option key with the tab then it puts the tab in the field if you do tab without the option it goes to the next field so the option key will add this and then when we do a search it's going to look for any fields that have tabs and both of those have tabs in them so i hope that was helpful i hope that gives you some new ideas on how to get your data as clean as possible and do more productive computing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of the final videos in the FileMaker Finding Fundamentals series.